Good morning, Fiber Adventurers. This is Kelly this morning. I'm coming to you because I wanted to do a bonus episode about the fleece auction and the fleeces that are there. So this is mostly designed for people who live in the area and might be coming to the fleece auction, but those of you who are not able to come to the auction might also enjoy hearing about all the fleeces that are available. The fleece auction is on September 3rd, that's Monday, Labor Day, at the Monterey County Fairgrounds. The auction time is 1130. That's a change from previous years where the auction has started at noon. Um, the auction starts at 1130. And it's also in a new location, the same location as last year. The location is the Livestock Pavilion right beside Gate 6 at the fairgrounds. There will be viewing at the location of the auction, viewing of the fleeces, starting at about 9 o'clock, I believe. I actually have a flyer that I can send to anyone who wants to be able to get into the fair free. So if you are coming to the Monterey County Fair Wool Auction and you'd like to be to have a pass to get into the fair free for that auction day and get get all the details about where to come and where to come into the fair and all of that just send me a message that's to use at to use fiber and I'll send you a copy of the flyer the other place where you can go for information and at, to ask any questions is the Anne's web group on Ravelry so go ahead and and uh, post any any comments or questions you have there um, and someone from the Anne's web group will be able to answer those questions too. All right well let's get started. I'm sitting in the trailer this morning because it's a little less set up than my other uh, podcasting location and this is going to be a quick episode. We have a hundred fleeces this year and so I just want to make sure that the word gets out to as many people as possible. Okay, so one of the other things about the auction is besides the viewing that starts around nine o'clock where you can go around and you can look at each of the fleeces and you can touch them, feel them, you can pull a lock off and look at each of the locks. You don't have to feel uh, uncomfortable or, you know, this isn't like the, the handcraft item show where you really aren't supposed to touch anything. Um, you can actually put your hands in these fleeces and kind of look around inside them to see, you know, are they consistent and so on. The other thing that we have, one of our, one of the Anne's web members, Patty, she takes a lock from each of the fleeces and washes it and attaches it to a board. So you can take a look at the board and see what the fleeces look like when they're washed. And that'll be particularly interesting this year because we have a number of fleeces that they have a color that looks kind of like red dirt, uh, sort of a pale red dirt color. Uh, the judge mentioned several times that she was judging the fleeces about the odd color. Um, and we, she believed that, you know, she said it doesn't, it wasn't affecting the quality of the fleece. It didn't seem to be, you know, any kind of problem or disease. She suspected that it was a combination of the lanolin from the fleeces combined with the color of the local dirt in the area where the fleeces were being were being raised. So it will be really interesting to see for people to see those fleeces already washed. We did have someone wash a couple of the different locks during the fleece judging and they did wash up really, really nicely. All right, uh, what else can you see when you look at the fleece as well? The judging notes will be in the bag, the fleece bag. And then there's also producer information in the fleece bag. So for example, if you're a big fan, as many of us are, of Anna Harvey's fleeces, you'll be able to see that you have, that this is a fleece from Anna Harvey. Or some of the other uh, producers who have quite a few fleeces in the show are uh, Terry Mendenhall, and we also have fleeces from George and Margaret Saunders, and Ace Vandenack and his Romneys, and a number of other. Uh, Fredine Johansson has quite a few CVM fleeces in the show. So if you're a fan of any of those producers, that's 
part of what you'll be seeing. Uh, we also, well, I won't go through all the names because I don't remember them, but one of the reasons that I do remember these is that uh, yesterday morning I went out to the fair, uh, wool room at the fair to help do some setup. And one of the things that I did as part of my help with the setup is I took all the fleece bags that were lined up on the wall, on the shelves, and I tipped them all forward so that the fleeces were showing and I made sure that all the ribbons were showing and all of the cards that have the information about which class they're in and the fleece number and who the producer is are all are all showing. So if if anyone happens to be at the fair prior to September 3rd and comes in the wool room, you can also take a look at the fleeces there. At that time, you really won't be able to, to feel them or get up close and personal. Um, well, you might be able to, depending on, on who's sitting in front of them, but the spinners all sit in front of the fleeces. And so it's not quite convenient to to let people back there to touch them. And, and one of the reasons people sit in front of them is kind of to protect them from being pawed <laughs> by all the fair goers. Uh, but if you're a buyer, a fleece buyer, and you want to take a look, at, take a peek at one of the fleeces ahead of time, I'm sure, I'm sure you could, you could ask the person sitting in front if, if you could um, get in a little closer to those fleeces and take, take a, take a look and a sniff and a feel of all those beautiful fleeces. What was fun yesterday about getting them all set up is that I did get a chance to look at them, touch them, and I could tell you I would be happy to take any of those fleeces home, really. They're really nice. Uh, last year we had a smaller, much smaller class. I think there were only about 60, but this year there are 100 fleeces, a lot to choose from. So let me just tell you uh, what's in our categories. We have the breed fleeces, so that's all the specific breeds, and I'll list the breeds in a minute. We also have market fleeces. The market fleeces are the white U fleeces. And then the black fleeces, the solid other than black, and the variegated. And those four classes, market, black, solid, other than black, and variegated, are all uh, divided up by wool classification system, uh, the fineness of the wool rather than by breed. So there's mixes of breeds in those four classes. And some of them are actually mixed breed fleeces. Some of them are uh, purebred fleeces, but they're in the market, uh, the market and the colored fleece classes. Um, in those market and colored fleece classes all together, just to give you a sense, uh, we have about 30 fine fleeces, about a dozen medium fleeces, and then about 20, uh, 20 to 25 long wool fleeces in there, uh, uh, categorizing in there would be something like Romney with some Wensley Dells. Um, there's a Navajo churro and so on. So, um, well, actually the Navajo churro is in the, and Wensley Dale were in the breed fleeces. So, but there's about 20 long wools that are either purebred or crossbred, but just categorized as as long wools. All right, so um, let me talk a little bit about the wool classification system before I get down to the brass tacks of what's in the what's in the auction. The Monterey County Wool Auction classifies its fleeces according to the blood system. So the blood system is based on when it was originally designed, it was based on what percentage of the sheep's heritage is merino. Merino being sort of the gold standard for a fine fleece. Now, at this point, at this point, this is only just used as a proxy for how fine the the wool is. It's not really about how much merino blood the sheep have in them. Um, so there's the blood system has fine and then half blood. So fine would be something similar to the merino classification. A fine fleece would be something that would be in the in the category of maybe 20 microns or less. And, you know, that would be like the merinos and rambolets and those types of fleeces. Um, and then we have half blood and the half blood fleeces are um, a little bit 
more, a little bit coarser than that, maybe in the 22 to 23 micron level. That micron system is another system for measuring fleece, and it's actually a system of you actually measure the fleece. It's not about how it feels. It's about how it how it measures. Um, and then we have, so fine and half blood, and then we have three-eighths blood and quarter blood. Those are the medium fleeces. And then we have low quarter blood, and then we have common and braid. And the low quarter blood and the common and braid fleeces are usually the long wools. Those are also categorized as maybe coarse or very coarse. Um, in the, the micron count there is maybe over 31 microns, over 30 microns, let's say. I'm looking at a chart here. Um, I have a, a, an interesting chart that compares the blood grading system with the micron. And then there's also a spinning count or Bradford system of grading wool that is interesting because it talks about it's, it was developed in the in the UK, and it talks about the number of hanks that can be spun per pound of clean wool on whatever equipment was existing at that time period. And a hank is 560 yards. So, for example, let me just let me just tell you an example of this. At the fine end of the half blood, you know, the finest end of the half blood category. It would be a fleece that's called the 62s in the Bradford system or, this, or the English spinning count system. 62s corresponds with half blood in the American grading system. It also corresponds with about 22 microns. What a 62s fleece is, so 62 hanks of 560 yards could be spun out of a pound of that fleece with the equipment that was existing at that time period. That's kind of on average. 62 times you could spin a 560-yard skein out of a pound of wool. So that's a pretty nice fine wool to be able to spin that to spin that wool that fine. So anyway, there are three different grading systems for wool, but our, our classification at the Monterey County Fair is this blood grade fine, half blood, three-eighths blood, quarter blood, low quarter blood, common, and braid. All right, so let's get down to brass tacks. What do we have as the breeds represented? So the in the breed category, you'll find fleeces from uh, Cormo, Corydale, Merino. There is a gorgeous Navajo churro fleece. We have an Oxford fleece. I'm interested in that one. We have Rambouillet, Romney, CVM, also known as Rommeldale, Jacob, and both CVM and Jacob are more rare breeds. We have Shetland fleeces this year, again, which is nice because we haven't seen much Shetland in prior years. We have a Colombian, a Columbia fleece, and that's an interesting fleece. It's originally developed as a cross of Lincoln and Rambouillet, um, and it's an American breed. We also have a Wensleydale fleeces in the show. So in the purebred fleece category, those are all the different breeds that you'll see. And then there are crosses and also some of those same breeds showing up again in the market and the colored wool classes. Uh, one of the things that's included in the market and colored wool, wool classes are some targi crosses. So I love targi fleece. It's nice and bouncy and springy and it's a, it's a great uh, a great addition in a crossbreed, I think. So you'll see some of those in the other classes. And then we also have two mohair fleeces in the show. We didn't have any mohair fleeces last year. Um, and it varies from year to year. So our judge was Sheila January. She has uh, raised cattle and sheep. The sheep she's raised are Finns and Wensleydale. And so she's knowledgeable about it, and she did a great job judging, great job talking to us about the different things that she saw in the fleeces. Um, she was also the judge for the handcraft items, and that was fun, too, to listen to her talk about handcrafts. Marsh and I were talking afterwards, um, and, 
and we were thinking it would be fun maybe come along January to have a knit along crochet along weave along where people were preparing or spin along where people were preparing things for the upcoming fairs and the fair season and to talk about some of the things I learned listening to her some of the things we know about about the judging and you know how to how to prepare your items for judging to make sure that you are in contention for a ribbon so that's coming up maybe in maybe along in January or so when people start thinking about what their projects are going to be for the year but listening to her judge the the fleece show was very very interesting she noted a lot of the fleeces were lamb fleeces and that's really nice because you get a finer a finer fleece from a lamb often uh, but one of the things she did note about the lamb fleeces is that they often have what are called milk tips and you can tell there's like a little curl at the end of the fleece um, and that curl that curly part of the fleece is a little different at the tip is a little different from the other part of the fleece kind of like you know when you uh, when your baby has its first haircut that little lock of hair that you keep from the 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 newborn is a different kind of hair than after they start growing a little more so in some of the fleeces those those milk tips as she called them uh, will be something that might break off if you're doing the processing through a wool processor if you're processing them yourself it's less of a problem uh, you can just kind of flick them open and and the little pieces will come off in the flicking but that's something to think about if you have a lamb fleece you want to look at those those little tips and see if you see this sort of sort of fuzzy fine baby baby hair uh, milk tips um, another interesting thing I, I talked a little bit before about the color of the fleeces from the the lanolin kind of combined with the local the local sort of mineral colors of the dirt um, but we did have a couple of fleeces that had a, a bright yellow staining on them uh, this is a canary staining sometimes called and there's an article I will I will link to the article in the show notes for this bonus episode there's an article by Shearer Stephanie Wilkes that talks about that canary staining and how you can identify it and what it means um, but mainly it's not something that would preclude you from from perhaps buying that fleece and in fact that fleece might be a good value because there might be some spinners who would who would look at that and say oh no I've heard about that I don't want it um, the canary staining comes from bacteria that feed on the lanolin and it it can if you don't wash your fleece right away it can actually damage the fleece but one of the things she said is that it didn't you know there the fleece was not weak or broken from this from this staining um, and and if you just wash that part of the fleece separately uh, because it it will take dye differently it it gets kind of a waxy coating on it from this uh, from this bacteria and so it will take dye differently that's not a bad thing necessarily but you maybe don't want that mixed in with the rest of your fleece that doesn't have the staining um, and it really could be an interesting dye experiment one of my first fleeces was a uh, Romney uh, named Bob I don't know if you if anybody's remembered things I've talked about out of Bob I made quite a few projects out of Bob's fleece and I got it for a very inexpensive um, it was an early fleece that I bought online and the seller was upfront about the fact that it had this yellow staining on it and I bought it thinking okay well it's a good inexpensive fleece that I can experiment with and I did a lot of over dyeing of that fleece and the dye jobs that I did came out really interesting on that fleece because of the the yellow in the middle of the the locks uh, so I got some interesting color combinations so if you know that's something that doesn't bother you uh, and if the fleece is a good value compared to some of the others um, it's not something to 
to shy away from necessarily. But you will want to wash that fleece right away to uh, kill any existing, still existing bacteria and stop that process, uh, stop that process from, from continuing because it, it can actually weaken the fleece at a certain point if it, if it continues. So if I bought this fleece, it wouldn't be one of the ones I just store in the garage and, you know, 10 years from now, get out and wash. <laughs> it's not the best practice. And it's definitely not a good practice for this, for this particular fleece. Uh, one of the other uh, things that she talked about that I thought was was really nice was the the characteristics of each of the breeds. And for example, the Navajo Churro Fleece, that's one of my favorites in the show. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous gray fleece with sort of silver gray tips on the locks. And the 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 tips on a Navajo churro fleece are very long. So you have the sort of main part of the lock that includes some undercoat and then a longer tip that kind of comes out to a point and maybe four inches for the tip and another couple of inches for the, for the undercoat, beautiful fleece. And it looks really steely silver gray, the part that's close in the undercoat. And then the tips are uh, like almost like a platinum color of gray. So really, really pretty. Um, that Navajo fleece is gorgeous. Very coarse. So that's not going to be for everyone. And nice, makes very nice rug wool. I'm actually wondering if that will go for, a high, sometimes the, the coarse fleeces go for a really high price. Depends on who's there. If we have quite a few rug weavers, that fleece could get bit up quite a bit. Uh, or it could be some years, everybody wants a flat, fine fleece and, you know, they're knitters mostly and there aren't, there aren't a lot of rug weavers there needing fleeces. And so the coarser fleeces are a really good bargain. So it kind of, it kind of just depends. One of the things that the judge said about the Navajo fleece, Navajo churro fleece is that it, unlike the Icelandic fleeces that also have the undercoat, in a Navajo churro fleece, you really can't pull them apart in the way that you can with a with some of the other primitive breeds like Shetland. Sometimes you can pull that soft undercoat apart from the the more uh, coarse hair tips. Um, in the Icelandic fleece, it's called the tog and the thel, and it can easily be pulled apart so that you can spin them separately. Navajo churro fleeces apparently don't have that same that same characteristic. Uh, the other fleece that I am really curious about is the Oxford fleece. Uh, Oxford, she said, is not a down breed, but it has that same bouncy characteristic as the down breed fleeces do. It's a very elastic fleece. This particular one, she said, was inconsistent in length. And again, it's, it's not a fine, fine fleece. It's more medium. Uh, maybe if you're familiar with the Dorset fleece, I would say maybe similar, similar to that. And I have a website that I also pulled up called, uh, it's wildfibers.co.uk that has the sort of micron counts for different fleeces. And she doesn't have the, uh, the Oxford here, but the Dorset is anywhere between 27 and 33 microns. So again, not like a Merino, uh, but not like a, a Lincoln that would be maybe 40 to 36 to 40 microns or a Cotswold. Those are the more uh, on the far end, of course, um, the Lincolns and Cotswolds. So yeah, it, it would be more along the lines of a Dorset or a Hampshire, I would think, or a Suffolk around those those uh, micron levels. And I'm really interested in this Oxford fleece. I don't know if I'll get it or not. Um, it's a good, it's a good fleece for socks, but it's a big fleece. I don't remember how many pounds it is. I think it's over six pounds. 
I was I was eyeing it yesterday and it's a good sized fleece you know six pounds is a lot of socks <laughs> honestly so I'm not sure uh, maybe there would be some people who would split it I don't know but that's one that I think is really uh, a nice a nice fleece we have quite a few uh, cormos in the show four cormos in the breed class and then quite a few other cormos in the market classes as well and then um, a lot of Corydales too. The Corydale class was a big one, as was the Merino class. So, you know, in the fine fleece area, we have quite a few nice, nice fleeces. The Grand Champion fleece this year was a Merino lamb fleece that the judge said was like a cloud. So I would imagine there will be quite an interesting bidding process on that fleece. Uh, it's not something that I'm interested in, but I am willing to bet there will be quite a few people interested in that lamb fleece. Um, I had my hands in it, and it is really, really soft and really, really pretty. So that'll be an interesting one to see what happens in the in the auction. Looking through my notes here to see what other highlights of the auction we have just to finish up uh, quite a few Romney fleeces 12 Romneys in the breed class and then quite a few other Romneys in the uh, mark market and colored wool classes so if you're interested in Romneys and both types Romney comes in two types the sort of wavy open lock crimp structure locks which I love uh, you know, lo long, large S-curve Romney. And then there's also a sort of a shorter staple usually and a more defined uh, crimp to it, a little shorter crimp. Um, still still kind of the S shape, but but not so not so wide and slow turning. And, and we have both, uh, a good mix of, of both of those. Uh, there's a uh, one of the Romney fleeces ended up in the champion among the champion fleeces and I believe it's the same Anna Harvey fleece that was in the champion fleeces at the black sheep gathering and didn't sell so if you are having some buyer's remorse about not getting that fleece there's another opportunity to get that Romney fleece here at the at the uh Monterey County auction and then uh, some CVMs there is a really gorgeous enormous CVM fleece there's a it's a gray and I don't remember how many pounds it is I want to say it's over eight pounds it was the first place uh, CVM breed fleece it is gorgeous if you like CVM or if you're interested in a CVM fleece that is a beautiful beautiful fleece we have two Jacob fleeces in the breed category and one of Jacob ancestry in the other classes. And they're very interesting. I think this year, to my eye, I think these are some of the softest Jacob fleeces that I've seen. And Jacob is not known as a soft, a soft fleece, but I think these are more along the softer end of the the Jacob fleeces so they're nice and then of course Shetlands she talked about two styles of Shetland I thought this was interesting and I'll just share this before I close up the Shetland fleeces she said there's two styles there's the old style which is with the separate fine wool and long wool and very you can really distinctly see the the difference between where the bottom part of the lock where the soft undercoat is and then the the longer part and then she said there's sort of the new quote in quotation marks new style or also known as the kindly style kind it's a kindly fleece I thought that was interesting and new style is in quotation marks because she said it was actually developed in the 1700s <laughs> so the new style of Shetland which is the locks are more uniform without that distinct difference I think is is how she described it have a little bit more defined crimp and she said uh, yeah that was developed in the 1700s so not quite new but newer than the very primitive type of Shetland so we have quite a few Shetland fleeces of both types 
uh, two in the breed classes, and I think at least three more in the other classes, the colored colored fleece classes. There's also a Columbia fleece that I really like. I, I would say I'm I'm interested in again because it's a a breed that I haven't seen a lot of. So I'm kind of interested maybe in in that fleece as well. There is also a Rambouillet that is really nice. I, I didn't re take notes about it as I was watching the judging, but when I was moving things around yesterday, uh, this one particular Rambouillet fleece was in the, in the Rambouillet class, breed class, was really nice. I'm not, I'm not an expert the way the judge is, but I was thinking that would be a fun fleece to, for someone who likes fine fleeces to play with. So, yeah, we have a lot to offer at the Monterey County Wool Auction, Labor Day, September 3rd. It starts at 11.30, but do come early to put your hands on those fleeces and make your choices and be enabled. <laughs> Take a look at the board that Patty makes with the nice washed locks. So thank you everyone for tuning in and we'll talk to you again on our next regular episode. Bye. <laughs>